Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this planet, and welcome to our Laser City Byte. I'm Frank Marchis, uh, Director of Citizen Science at Unistella uh, for the SET Institute, and also Manager of Laser City Project. And with me, we have La Lawrence Gro. Yes, Hi, Lawrence. hello everybody. I'm the Outreach Manager for Laser SETI, and also work with exoplanets in Unistellar and SETI Institute Citizen Science. Okay, so all those titles have been shown and... Uh, yes. now we're official. <laughs> now we're official. Let's talk about what we hear. Yes, so today I wanted to talk about a really interesting paper that came out. Um, just so you know, this paper has been put on the archive but has not been accepted by a journal yet. Um, but this is Mendez et al. 2024 about the WOW signal um, and basically proposes some new explanations for the wow signal. So, Frank, do you want to tell us what the wow signal is in case? Yeah, in case some know? people were not living in this. <laughs> in the 70s? In the 70s, <laughs> like you. Uh, so, Still this please. is a signal that was detected in 1977, August 15. It's one of the, one of the most iconic signals in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence because uh, it was detected by um, a radio antenna called the Big Ears in Ohio. And um, when they detected it, they clearly uh, saw that it was a very intense signal at uh, 1420, 1420 MHz, which is the emission line of hydrogen. And it was extremely intense and so intense that basically it has a very specific signature. It lasted for 72 seconds roughly and did not repeat itself. So one of the astronomers that saw this on a piece of paper at the time we were recording on the piece of paper, the, the signal, circled it and wrote, wow, and that's become the wow signal. And we don't know if this signal is an extraterrestrial civilization trying to, add, to talk to us or it's something else. And this paper today, which has been put on the archive that we're going to discuss, is basically an explanation that um, this this um, signal could be simply some na due to some natural causes. Exactly. Um, and there have been other papers that have tried to come up with an explanation for this signal, uh, even some to do with comets, which I think have been refuted since. But there's also been searches to, like you said, look for the signal again, and none have been um, no re recreations of this signal have been found. So. What these people propose is that essentially it's some sort of transient event in, in space, right? And transient just means it happens for a very, very short period of time. Um, but just to walk through what they did, so this group led by Menzdez is uh, basically looking through Arecibo data, using Arecibo to look at red dwarfs. Um, and that's the survey that they call Arecibo Reds, but a nice plus side of having all of this data is that they can use it for something else, like looking at particular stars in their data set and analyzing those to see if there's any any signatures that could look like the WOW signal. So that's essentially so, what they did. So they did not do this survey to find an explanation for the WOW signal. They did this survey for something else, but they used this data to try to find a signature that could be more or less similar. Yes, that is what I have gathered. Okay. Um, so essentially, some of these targets that they happen to look at in their, their initial survey uh, have no next planets around them. Um, so I think they thought that these would be particular, particularly interesting. Um, and they did use a, a similar approach to how the original Ohio study search was done in looking for, uh, you know, any, any similar signatures in this case. But they did find a few narrow band signals, which is what the, the WOW signal was, um, in the direction of a few different targets that they mm -hmm. looked at. And upon further investigation, they saw that these were astrophysical in origin. They were cold, small H1 clouds. Um, so they were different in the way that they're not as bright as the WOW signal, but they're very similar in, in other ways, um, in their frequency, um, except the wow signal is like a hundred times brighter. <laughs> so that's where the astrophysical explanation that they're investigating comes in. So what makes this signal so bright if it's natural? 
So that's, they go through a couple of different options. One is, is basically that there's some sort of astrophysical phenomenon that is temporarily exciting all of the hydrogen in these clouds um, in, a, in a phenomenon we call super radiance, um, almost making it appear like a maser. So it's getting really, really bright, but the triggering source that's exciting all of the hydrogen in these clouds doesn't necessarily have to be visible to the telescope. So they basically explain how you could have, I don't know, say that you are the Big Ear Telescope and the cloud that happened to be in the view of the Big Ear Telescope at the time is over here, but then there's some exciting triggering source. My hand may be off camera, maybe it's over here. <laughs> and that source excites the H1 cloud and you don't see the source as the telescope because it's all the way over here, but you still see the excitation from the cloud. Um, so in that way, it would make sense that the, that the triggering source wasn't found in the original wow signal data and we just saw this result of these really excited clouds. So what, is, what make the clouds incandescent? What, is the, what could be the source? Do you have an explanation? So, uh, I think that that's still up for debate from what I could tell. Um, there are several different astrophysical objects that could cause that, like magnetars. Um, but that's still the question. Their paper is more saying, hey, this could happen. We don't know exactly what could have caused that excitation without a shadow of a doubt, otherwise this wouldn't be such a mystery. Mm -hmm. um, but that type of excitation could have caused the wow signal. Okay, so in summary, these papers claims that there could be a, a natural way of producing maser-like emission that will be received by a radio antenna, such as it looks like a very bright emission in radio. Mm -hmm. But they don't have neither the location nor the source of this emission. Exactly. So there's still a lot of work to do. Yes, yes, of course. It's basically saying that this could be astrophysical, even though we only saw it with one feed horn from the telescope, that it wasn't caught by other telescopes. And even though we don't know where it is, there still could be an astrophysical origin is basically what I took away from the okay. paper. And we have not seen signals like this ever again, that bright. Is the most energetic signal detected by a radio, ante radio antenna which, for which the cause is not technological. It's not the reflection of a satellite emission, an emission of a satellite or something right. like that. As far as we can tell, there's been other studies that have tried to explore whether the WOW signal was terrestrial in origin or not, but to my knowledge, none of them have proved that either. Okay. So the next step for this work would be to find the source of this emission to be, and basically the location of these uh, clouds of hydrogen. Exactly. Is that possible? Well, the idea is that this was a transient event, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever it was that was triggering that excitation, that super radiance, don't know if it's still going to be around. All right, so there were so many coincidences happening at the same time that we basically exactly. may not be able to recreate this again. However, we could continue to observe the sky in radio, and we will be able to see something like this maybe in the future. Hopefully. It sounds like a right place, right time sort of thing back in 1977 when this was found. And even, I believe, some, some studies put a maximum duration on that event as... 30 to 40 hours, mm -hmm. so it's quite quick, uh, astronomically speaking. So again, if we can get in the right place at the right time again, and this is astrophysical, maybe we could see something like that again. Okay. Anything else you want to say to our viewers in relation to the world signal? Wow. <laughs> it's not wow, it's <laughs> meh. <laughs> <laughs> the wow had an exclamation point at the end of it. Okay. Well, I still... Yeah, I don't think that we can say that the war signal was technological aliens no. calling us. We cannot we cannot say that based on one one detection. So we can't. And it's some it's a 
it's the scientific method, right? It has to be repeatable. And even when we do searches uh, of the sky with laser study, if we think we see something, we're going to have to be able to verify that and maybe see it repeated in order to make a real statement about whether that was technological or astrophysical, uh, that we didn't have that here. So that's one of the reasons we are working not on in radio, in our case, we're working on the detection in la of lasers using this instrument called laser SETI that you have here. You have a, a two, of sta two of the stations here. Our goal is to be able to detect laser emission coming from technological civilization. And the goal of observing all the sky all the time with multiple stations is to be able to confirm a detection mm -hmm. and do a follow-up. Not, not like in radio telescope where we have just one detection and like in this case, we want to have multiple observations so we confirm the existence of these laser pearls and hopefully detect more than the existence, such as get the content of the signal or have a better idea of the location of the signal as well, exactly. where it's coming from, which planetary system is telling them and telling us we are here. Okay. That's great. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Lorraine. Wow. Have a great day. It was meh. <laughs>